Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly reading for October 7th to the 13th. This is for Taurus, Taurus Rising, and Taurus Moon. And you know we're going to jump right into it, Taurus. This is a major week, okay? Huge. And you see that at the top, I did include the new moon solar eclipse in Libra. That happened last week because we're still within, you know, the energies of that, okay? With it, you're still going to be feeling it the impact is going to be playing out throughout this week and even the rest of the month all right and pretty much you know it is a six month cycle so until we we reach the corresponding full moon in libra in april 2025 this is in your sixth house everyday activities work work is a big part of the sixth house health matters as well uh and uh even pets even pets but work is a big thing maybe you're getting like a uh, number of assignments clients things like that there's a lot happening here okay i'm also calling this the luckiest week of october because we have such amazing aspects but we have these amazing jupiter trines which are very auspicious they make your life effortless that uh it's just really really great and because you see jupiter will go retrograde this uh week and so after this weekend all right up until the 13th jupiter will have no other aspects for the rest of October, for the rest of the month, all right? That's not, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying these aspects are golden. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of these aspects. And a lot of y'all may just see a lot of luck shaping uh, your life this week as well. But as you can see, major events, major aspects, this week is not messing around. Now, Tuesday, October 8th, we kick off this week with Mercury trining Jupiter. This is absolutely amazing. This is a really good time for you to pitch something, negotiate something, have an important conversation that you want luck around because remember, Jupiter is on your side. Now, for Tauruses, this could have to do with money and finances. Remember, Jupiter and Gemini is in your second house of income, salary. So, wow. that I mean, this is a great day to ask for a raise. In fact, actually, I had a friend text me yesterday asking, when is the best day to ask for a raise? I'm in that place now. I want to make more money. Well, hello. This is it. All right. With Mercury, uh, the planet of communication, Jupiter, all about expansion and luck and even profit, right? And then you've got Mercury and Libra, okay? Partnerships, relationships here. So even this is really great because remember, again, Mercury and Libra in your sixth house of work. <laughs> and then Jupiter and Gemini in your second house of money and finances. Now, the other thing is if you're not here for money at all, for anything that has to do with finances, self-worth, self-value, possessions, material possessions. Maybe you're thinking about like buying something big or there's something here that may be coming into your world in your physical world, uh, assets as well. Okay. Even food. There's, you know, uh, second house is related to food, by the way. That's a thing for you. It's also possibly a really good time for to travel. All right. With, with uh, Mercury trining Jupiter. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of y'all are planning trips. Now on the same day, Venus trying Mars. Wow. This is amazing. Okay. Uh, this is really great. I talked a lot about this in your monthly forecast. It can be very emotionally moving, especially with the fact that we have Venus in Scorpio, you have Mars in Cancer. Remember, two water signs, so a lot of emotions here. But Venus is actually in Mars' sign, right? Mars being the traditional ruler of Scorpio. So remember what I said in your monthly forecast. This is harmony. This is things harmonizing, um, especially with matters that have to do with love and relationships. Feel good energy. Remember, Venus is your ruling planet, Taurus. All right? I want you to take advantage of this. So big communication that is happening here all right with the fact that mars is in cancer in your third house of communication so and again travel i wouldn't be surprised if you're taking this wonderful trip uh but again love pleasure passion this could be your say anything moment that's how moving this day is even like uh 16 candles when Molly Ringwald and that guy Jake finally kiss after all of that, like up and down that's been happening throughout the movie. Same thing in real life with all these aspects, while these Libra aspects and eclipse in Libra, all about partnerships, all about relationships, um, just, you know, weighing decisions, things like that, things like that. All right. And again, it can be work related for you uh, if you're not here for love, uh, 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 romance, um, any of that. All right. Mars is definitely being a gentleman right now. OK, big productive energy embracing his softer side this day to accommodate venus all right so very special now 
Wednesday, October 9th, Jupiter will go retrograde until February 6, 2025. Happens every year, Jupiter goes retrograde. Um, it doesn't take away any of the luck, any of the abundance, good fortune, wisdom Jupiter's known for. So think about when Jupiter went into Gemini around May, right? So a lot of y'all could have had movement there, especially with money, finances, or just, you know, even confidence and whatnot. So think about what you've reaped since that time. Um, and it's really interesting because I think I mentioned this in another forecast of yours uh, with Jupiter in Gemini, the sign of the twin. It can bring two choices, two options, and you're already weighing decisions with all that Libra energy, that Libra eclipse. So very interesting here, but it really is about going within and thinking about, you know, all the wisdom that you've, you know, uh, becoming wiser, right? And really looking forward to Jupiter going direct in February. And that's going to be a time when Jupiter goes direct for you, Taurus, February till about like June. Wow. Like money stuff. Okay. Uh, so what else can I tell you? October 11th is when Pluto does go direct. Now, this is interesting. Pluto is going to go direct on October 11th. Put this in your calendar until November 19th. So you pretty much have a month where Pluto is blasting forward. Remember, the book ends when any planet goes direct. But Pluto is a powerful planet. It's the planet of power and empowerment. And it's been retrograde May, since May 2nd. And so what this means is that something around May 2nd until about this point, there could have been a delay. All right. Pluto and Capricorn in your ninth house. So the way that you see things, there could have been, uh, you know, turning points there. There could have been like, you know, back and forth energy as well. Ninth house is also, you know, it's spirituality, it's your belief system, but it's also publishing. It's broadcasting as well. There could have been, you know, just some delays around there. It's higher education, higher mind learning. So something that you were learning uh, as well as long distance travel. So there could have been something here. Anyway, when he goes direct again, you have one month to go hard. All right. Go hard or go home. That's what Pluto is saying. Have uh, your flash dance moment. This is going to be big. This is going to be big because, again, Pluto is not only empowerment, empower, but also destruction. That's how powerful he is. So remember what I said. This is breaking down any walls that you're just no or anything that just doesn't serve you well anymore. Creating this new system structure for yourself and really feeling empowered, really going under the surface to remember Pluto is the underworld represents the underworld. So really going deep, having that death and rebirth, you know, these new cycles. And you could have been going through a lot of that for the past, I mean, since 2008 when Pluto moved into Capricorn. So a lot of cycles that you were going through in terms of your transformation on your belief system, how you were seeing things, your wisdom. Okay, so this is, this is going to be really, really big in terms of the fact that Pluto is going to be in Capricorn the last time in our lifetime at this point after November, November 19th moves into Aquarius. All right. And that's, you're going to have so much emphasis on career. That's your 10th house of career for the next 19, 20 years. All right. Remember Pluto is empowerment. So it's really just also thinking about um, what is the legacy that you want to leave? Who, is, you know, what do you want your life to be like starting in 2025? This is living the life that you deserve realizing that taking action for it Taurus all right you know I love you I really want you to I want the best for you now Sunday October 13th here we are sun trining Jupiter the best aspect of October the only time that the sun will actually trend Jupiter this year so uh, please take advantage please uh, cherry on top really take advantage of this aspect you have the enormously abundant sun working with a planet of good fortune and luck wisdom and profit uh, to do something special for you, to make your life even more extraordinary. Take advantage of this day, October 13th, okay? Even though Jupiter has retrograde, it doesn't matter. It just went retrograde. So uh, this is all the good stuff, things happening for you, doors opening for you. I absolutely love this for you. And once again, something that has to do with money. Jupiter and Gemini is your second house of money. <laughs> so finances, salary, income, really big. And again, if you're not here for, for money, you're, you're, it's self-worth, it's self-value. It's something that's making you feel really confident by things that are happening in your life. And, you know, this is uh, 
and uh, keep in mind it's it's a strong aspect so you will s still feel it the the days following it after okay um i do love the fact that the moon will be in aquarius all weekend long too because that completes the picture here uh sun and libra jupiter and gemini moon and aquarius the three air signs have conversations that you need to have communicate it's all about communication it's Pro it's intellect it's thinking aquarius is the visionary think about the vision that you want to set up for yourself this is going to be uh, and you know and aquarius is a humanitarian but remember pluto moving into aquarius is going to be a big deal for you and then obviously you know as we move into aquarius season venus is eventually going to move into aquarius so like a lot happening with career for y'all you're moving into now mercury is going to move into scorpio for on this same day for the rest of the month as I said, your monthly forecast, Mercury and Scorpio, more Mulder than Scully, okay? More, uh, you know, Velma than Scooby-Doo. This is going deep, all right? But not being afraid to, not being afraid to, uh, really going deep, exploring the unknown. That's what Mercury and Scorpio is, all right? Um, there is, like, this curiosity here, what's going on behind the scenes, okay? So it could be you doing a lot of reflection, a lot of reflection. When it comes to partnerships and relationships, Scorpio is your opposite side. So, uh, you, you know, one-on-one -on -one commitments as well. Or even with partnerships, relationships, again, that's not limited to love. It can be career. It can be whatever resonates with you, but really going deep, maybe even doing some shadow work, but also deepening your communications, all right? So I listen, this is a this is a big week. It's a big week, Taurus. Let's see what's going on for you uh, for the week of October 7th to the 13th. Again, for Taurus, Taurus rising and woo, Taurus moon. <laughs> and uh, I hope you love my shuffling skills today, Taurus. I know you do. You do. All right. Let's see what's going on for you, Taurus. October 17th to the 13th, Taurus, I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview, especially for a weekly reading. And if we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, Taurus, you know I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, my goodness. October is going to be a really big month. Um, a lot of changes that are happening. I want you to get excited about it. Hi, Ruby. My dog just walked into the room. Okay, so, Taurus, let's see what's going on. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I've okay okay this is gonna be a month this is gonna be a month um well you're good and I want you to uh know that anything that happens this month is just putting you where you need to be <laughs> you're absolutely good here um it seems like I can't even believe what's happening here I don't even okay so let's get started look across okay so you got the sun Wow, things are great for you. Things are, you know, listen, and I know I dropped these uh, forecasts a little bit earlier than the actual week, so this could be still to come, but the sun, there's so much optimism here. Think about all this sh uh, sunlight shining all the shadows away from your life. Remember, you're doing shadow work. You're getting, you're, you're leaving things behind anyway. And so this is really wonderful. I'm getting energy of like rebirth too. I know that was a big thing actually for your monthly forecast, right? That was a, a, a pretty big thing. That was uh, that uh, you did have death and you're uh, in the heart of your spread. So you're going through some transformative moments and uh, this is great. You even see the wisdom child here. I'm going to point something out. You see the wisdom child with a red feather in her cap, uh, the cap, uh, referencing, um, you know, the death card with the feather in the cap, referencing the fool with the feather in the cap, like changes, transformation, cycles, this rebirth energy, but in a golden way. So take advantage. Of, there's something really special happening for you. Really, really wonderful. All right. Remember, um, we're still in uh, Libra season coming after that eclipse, all in your sixth house of everyday activities. So you could be moving in this direction where everything where you feel a lot more confident and uh, just so much optimism in the sun card. You know, the sun card in tarot is the biggest yes if you've ever gotten a tarot reading. Now, in the heart of your spread, you got the tower. Very interesting. So, but look at what you got in your future. I know I'm going to skip ahead. You got the Wheel of Fortune. And so when you see what's happening here, it does seem like, in a sense, there may be something that, remember I talked about these systems, these walls, breaking them down. If you don't do it, maybe the eclipse is still going to do it for you. Maybe uh, it's just going to happen with the tower. And you see, you know, the lightning striking the crown off the tower. There's something here where... And the crown represents ego, by the way. So there's something here, and I'm not saying that like you have an ego or anything. I'm just saying that's what this card is. So there's something here that 
I'm getting where something's got to go and you are possibly going to in the moment be like, oh, why did that happen? But the tower card, it happens for you. Okay. Not to you, but for you. All right. Clears the decks. All right. Phoenix rising from the ashes. Ah, you did get the tower in your monthly forecast. Oh, I shouldn't be giving away everything that happened in your monthly forecast because I know a lot of y'all didn't see it. Anyway, so there you go. There is something that just expect big change. Okay. Just expect a tower. moment. And, you know, in this card, it's like chaotic. It's destructive. But I always say this, a tower moment, it's how you handle those energies. So, and every Taurus is different. I say this all the time. You have different rising signs. You have different birth charts. It makes you different from every Taurus in the world. Some Taurus could feel the tower moment as like a one out of 10. You're like, no big deal. Some could be like, you know, it could be like a four or five, depending on, you know, how reactive you are or whatnot. But just remember, it's clearing the decks for something. Something's definitely just not working. Okay. And uh, in a sense, you know, for some of y'all, it actually could be just you, actually, you know, you're the one that's like, okay, this isn't working. I just want it to just, right? So you did get the fight, and I'll even clarify the tower for you. Yeah, you got the moon. There is something here where I, you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. <laughs> and then you got the magician. I can't even believe this. This is going to be possibly one of the biggest weeks for you when you look across your cross. Major arcana, major arcana, major arcana, major arcana, all major arcana. These are significant. This is significant life change. So you see, like I said, you know, with the tower, it's something, it's not working. And let's move, let's burn it down, build it up. Okay. That is Pluto going direct in Capricorn. That's all this energy in Scorpio too, by the way. Uh, so uh, yeah. And you know, the tower is attributed to Mars and Mars is in cancer right now in your third house of communication and thinking and processing and logic intellect. There's, there's stuff happening because you also got the moon as well. Okay. And so uh, there could be something here where you're just like, whoa, and overthinking things and really need to have that emotional evolution, working with your emotions. Remember, I said that from the beginning, Mars and Cancer is focusing on emotional growth, and then boom, something new, just beautiful, this new beginning. Remember, I said Phoenix rising from the ashes, but you got the magician rising from the table, okay? So kicking off this new journey for you, this absolute new journey, uh, and you've got that power to manifest whatever you want here, just like the magician, as above, so below, right? It's all about mentalism. Uh, now, you've got that five of wands energy in your challenge area. Cut out that noise, okay? If there is uh, not seeing eye to eye with uh, colleagues or family members or even significant other, whatever resonates with you, okay? Cut out that noise because there is something. And it actually seems like you're moving toward that, and that could be the source of the tower. But it just seems like that it's just too much noise, and it's just going nowhere energy, okay? You see this card? It's just kids uh, swinging their wands in the air. And this card is, you know, highly associated with, like, competition and even ego like i said remember with that crown being knocked off so keep that in mind there's the let's i always say there's a difference between the physical mind and the higher mind so move closer to the higher mind your intuition being in touched with your higher self your spirit guides whatever right that that makes you your authentic self and vibrate at this high frequency remember something <laughs> amazing is going to happen for you you have the queen of wands in your crown and the nine of cups and the root of your spread like, you're actually really, really uh, fantastic, okay? You're, you're fantastically good. Queen of Wands in your crown, yeah, go for it. Go for everything that you want. Attract everything you want. Be social, too. I want you to be very social. Communication is going to be highlighted this week. Take advantage of Mercury, Trend, Jupiter. Please do, okay? Queen of Wands, she's very regal. She can get whatever she wants. That's the Queen of Wands. Uh, she also, you see the black cat here, in touch, very much in touch with her shadow self. Like, she's courageous. She's bold. She's powerful. Uh, empower, right? Remember, think of empowerment, your empowerment. Um, and so just uh, continue to move in that direction. I also love the fact that you see that she does hold the sunflower in her hand with the sunflowers in her throne, okay? Referencing the sun card. Hold on to that energy, okay? Hold on to that energy. You even see the sunflowers existing in the actual sun card optimism okay abundance all of that great great energy now nine of cups yeah 
There could be something that you're really hoping for or wishing for. There could be something that's bringing you total satisfaction this week, okay? And it really is, again, when I look at your spread, there could even be some of y'all that are, you know, something does happen and you do get caught up in the moment and you just see it in this way where it's just like more like half glass empty, whereas see it the other way okay and again it's going to resonate eventually with y'all like okay that actually was the best thing for me because you got the magician you got the wheel of fortune wheel of fortune new path opening up for you this abundant prosperous like faded path right the wheel of fortune you're here by the way you know that right the four fixed signs in the corners here you're here you're a fixed sign okay bringing that stability that there is this new thing happening for you card 10 when zero equals new beginning coming after the magician insane right even with the sun here and like you're absolutely good you're good i'm very excited for you there's uh and that's the thing like some of y'all may decide this week the direction you do want to go and again that time about it just feels like this blessing in disguise don't overthink it don't overanalyze it just work with your emotions through it all right now let's get to your stuff by the way, the Wheel of Fortune is attributed to Jupiter. Okay, so remember, this is the week, where the luckiest week, with Jupiter being very active. All right, so uh, really nice, really nice. Um, if you like this reading, it'd be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. You know I love y'all. Taurus is y'all are amazing. All right, let's 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 break it down. You're good. You're f don't even don't even. Okay, so the other thing I was gonna say. Let me remind you, Jupiter and Gemini, your second house of money, income, like finances. Like you are the native ruler of the second house. You know that, right? Okay, so uh, Taurus, maybe not. I'm I'm here to tell you that's your domain. That's your domain. Uh, okay, so you can see you're clearly good. You've got all these pentacle. Like you're good. You're great. Seven of Wands. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. A lot of y'all may feel like you're, uh, it, it's just maybe feeling like you're going on like this uphill battle. You may be feeling that you're not seeing eye to eye with people that are coming after you. Uh, remember emotions are heightened with Venus and Scorpio, Mars and cancer anyway. So emotions are really heightened, but just look, he's got the advantage. He's at the top of the hill, right? So this is someone who is standing his ground, right? So continue to stand your ground. You're going to be absolutely fine. You're going to be wonderful. Wonderful. A lot of family energy is still coming through for me, by the way. For some of y'all, you may feel that. All right, just let, just let you know, but Queen of Pentacles, your external factors area. So it seems like you got someone that is going to open doors for you. It seems like there's someone who's taking care of you in a financial perspective. Absolutely. Queen of Pentacles has that maternal side. You can even see her hands are underneath the pedicle here, right? So giving, selfless, like, um, and, and Queen of Pentacles, a lot of references here to the magician how amazing is that and so you can even see the roses at the top you see they're both wearing the same outfit red white except hers is flipped and inside you know red and white by the way are really important uh colors in alchemy okay and so white is really about soul and and, and spirit and red is like blood and passion and action and your physical world anyway Oh my goodness. I'm going to, you're, you're good. You're absolutely good here. Oh, and the other thing is like, you even see the bunny rabbit here in the corner, right? Representing that fertility, that growth. Like there is in, in your external factors area. So there definitely is someone that could open doors for you. There is someone that could be, you know, it could be signing a contract for something like a new client, whatever it is, what, you know, there it's pentacles. Okay. Somebody who's got a lot of money, but could also be, remember there's a lot of family energy. So there's someone here that's being supportive in some way could be in a financial sense, but remember, your physical reality as well. That is what pentacles are. So something, you may be getting something. You may be receiving something. All right. Queen of Pentacles is Capricorn. So it could be Capricorn. It could be Capricorn rising, Capricorn moon. There's something there. Eight of Wands. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. This is energy. This is action. This is movement. This is swift movement. So a lot of your passions, your ambitions, you're just ready. You're ready. You're ready for something to land. Okay. You're ready for something to land or take off. Uh, but there is a sense of like, let's just go. Let's do it. I love this energy for you. Okay. Could also be part of your personal transformation. If you are here for love, by the way, if there is something here with love and relationships for you, we do call the eight of wands like the arrows of love as well. Okay. It's a, a really, really nice. And it is a Sagittarius card, your eighth house. So love, but deeply, deeply, but work, career, everything. There's, there's movement. I want you to move with this. And then in your final outcome, I mean, come on, do we have to talk about this? You know, you're good. 
<laughs> you have the Ten of Pentacles. It's raining pentacles in the form of the Tree of Life. This is a very significant card. It's, uh, you know, uh, you coming into your physical realm. It's, it's, you're good. You're, you're wonderful. This is so much prosperity, so much success. It's your kingdom come. I say it's, you made it. It's your made it card. You, you made it card. And so remember, it's more about like coming into your physical, like being appreciative and grateful for everything that's happening in your physical world. This is legacy. This is reaching your legacy. There's a lot happening here. Taurus, you're on your way. Like this is, uh, and again, family energy showing up here as well. You see the three generations of family here. This card is highly associated with like inheritance, invest uh, yeah, as well. So that could be a thing. Um, but uh, you're, you're right here. Uh, and I mean, that's a big castle with a lot of, you even see the harvest is still in this card. Uh, pentacles, money, wealth. I mean, like, this is, this is big. This is big. Your life is changing. This is a life-changing week. This is a game-changing week. That Wheel of Fortune in your future, oh my goodness, with the Ten of Pentacles. <laughs> You're good. You're absolutely good. Just remember, you got that tower here. Um, and the heart of your spread, so should anything happen, like, out of the blue, and you're just like, whoa, it was meant, okay? And and just work with those energies, okay? Work with those energies and see and come out on the other side. You got that magician here, right? With the Wheel of Fortune, you're good. Taurus, y'all are amazing. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a big, big, big old week for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Next week, we will uh, clearly talk about everything else that's happening next week. I think we have that full moon, right? We have the full moon in Aries next week. So it's going to be a big week, Taurus says. It's going to be a big week too, but this is definitely a big week. All right, work with those energies. Um, live the life that you deserve. All right, take that action. Y'all are amazing, Taurus says. If you like this reading, it would be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments, and uh, I will see you next week. All right, thanks so much, Taurus. All right, bye-bye.